Hey guys, today I'm coming to you with a short video on how to set up an enclosure for our leopard gecko. I was getting ready to change one of my enclosures, and I thought it would be a good idea to introduce the first reptile on the channel and the entire reason I started farming insects to begin with. This is my 500 subscriber special. Thanks to all of you. But first, if you are new, consider subscribing. I cover a range of topics for multiple feeder insects, and with this video, now covering reptiles as well. And with that out of the way, let's start the video. This is my boy, Senior Gonads, or just Gonads. He is a bell albino. We are going to be setting up his enclosure today. First, let's take a look at how it was before the cleaning. And now, that's a whole lot better. Let's start off by changing out the paper towels. Leopard gecko don't make a huge mess. However, over time, they will. They do like to use the bathroom in a single spot in their enclosure. So a little hack to help with cleanup is to place extra paper towels down in the area where they first relieve themselves at, and they will go there from there on. They also urinate a solid pellet called urate, which is a yellowish white. No need to worry, their waste is extremely easy to deal with and does not get off a strong pungent odor, or really much of one at all that I can detect without sticking my nose to it, and I just don't love science enough for all that. Any which way, wrap up their waste and get rid of it along with the old flooring and let's give it a wipe down. Much better. In this closure, I use a long trunk hide as a moist hide. It has sphagnum moss wrapped in paper towel to help hold moisture and assist the gecko in shedding its skin while not giving him the potential to eat moss while he sheds. I keep a hide on the other side to give him a warm option and then plant straight down over the side of his log hide and creates a canopy above, acting as an unconventional, however functional, cool hide. Once we place the entrance, that is a hide that one of my other geckos outgrew. I went this route due to not wanting to clutter up too much of his tank as I do find him walking around out in the open quite a bit. Now that hides are out of the way, let's take a moment to talk about temperatures. Leopard gecko do well when they are kept a little above 80 degrees Fahrenheit on the warm side, with the cool side dipping down towards 75 degrees Fahrenheit. You want to place one hide on the heating pad, one about in the middle, and one at the furthest point from the heating pad to create a cool zone in case they get too warm or uncomfortable on the hot side, and want to chill out, literally. Now to the diet. Leopard geckos are insectivores, and eat an insect only diet. Mealworms are a staple, along with crickets and roaches. Superworms and waxworms are good junk food. However, it can cause problems if you strictly feed them either of those two, as they may find mealworms thereafter less appealing and not eat them. Superworms do have a high fat content compared to mealworms. However, when properly fed, your gecko will happily take any food item you offer them. You should gut load and dust your insects with every feeding with vitamins and either calcium D3 or calcium. Link in the card above for my gut loading video. This should be alternated every other feeding, which should be about every two to five days depending on your leopard gecko's age. Younger geckos tend to eat more often, while older ones tend to eat less. As long as you provide a balanced diet with gut loaded and dusted insects, your leopard gecko will be just fine. You should leave a dish of calcium available to your gecko at all times. They will self-regulate. Lastly guys, we're going to talk a little bit about temperament and handling. Some leopard geckos are just butts. Some are a bit derpy when they hunt. Some do not like to be held. They are all a little different. I have four and each of them have their own personalities. For the most part, leopard gecko don't mind being held often and can even bond with you to a certain degree and seemingly want to come out of their cage when they hear you, as mine often come out of their hides when they hear me enter the room, walk up to the glass and start looking up at me. It just depends on the animal and how often you handle them. Be careful and look for defensive body language like a raised tail. They will lift it and wag it back and forth when stressed or threatened. When I first got gonads, one of my first attempts handling him, he ran for me and started rattling the end of his tail. At the time, I didn't understand him, but I know now that the poor guy was stressed beyond belief and I want to avoid situations like that, as leopard gecko, like many many other lizards, can drop their tails. They will grow it back, but it won't look the same. So give them enough hides, give them proper heat eating and feed them well. And that about covers it guys. If you like this video and have it in your critter loving heart, give me a like, a subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more videos in the future like this. And as always, from the gizzards and I, have a wonderful day.